My name is Ray Morris and today's lesson is on impasti calculations. This is for ELT 242. We're going to be looking through these three tables today. Uh, table 310.16, Table 310.15 C1, and Table 310.15 B1. What are we trying to do here? We're basically trying to save and protect the insulation. The copper was going to heat up if it gets too much amperage on it and creates heat. Is it going to break down the copper? It's not. It's going to break down the insulation and we've got to keep the insulation on there to keep it safe. So that's what we're trying to do with this. Okay, problem number one. What is the impasti of a 2 alt THHN copper wire? We got 2 alt is the size. THHN is the type of insulation on the wire and it's copper. That's the three things we need to know to find out the amperage. So what we're going to do is go to table 310.16. Table 310.16 is based on, this amperage is based on, there's only one, two, or three wires, current carrying wires in that conduit or cable and the ambient temperature around that is 86 degrees. That's going to be your maximum impasti of that wire if those conditions are met. Okay, here's the chart, table 31016. And we got to find 2 alt. So you look on the left hand side and it says size AWG, American wire gauge, or KC mill, which that's bigger wires. Well, we're going to find 2 alt, so it's 2 slash 0. And that's our wire size. Now we need to find the insulation type. And there's three temperature settings up top. You got 60 degrees Celsius, 75 degrees Celsius, and 90 degrees Celsius. And if you look below there, all them insulation types, it says copper. And then on the other side, it says aluminum or copper clad aluminum. Well, we want to make sure we're in the copper one because that's what our question says. And we got to find THHN. And if you look in the 90 degree column, it, it is 90 degree Celsius column, it is there. So what we're doing now, now we see it's 195 degrees, 195 amps is what the 2 alt will carry. And this is what you do on every wire. I would say this is the first thing you do. If you're looking for 6 THW, you'll go to 6, go find THW, which is in the middle column, and it's 65 amps. If you're looking for 4 alt THHN, you do the same thing. Or number 6 TW, you see 6, you see TW, and follow the chart. But this is one that I think this is the first thing you do on every question is you'll find what size wire, what size insulation, and the type of material, copper or aluminum. And as soon as you find those three, you go to this table and you establish a number on your impasti. And then we're going to go up or down from that number there. Okay, what is the impasti of a 2 alt THHN copper wire that has seven current carrying conductors in the conduit? Okay. We go to two, table 310.16 and we sit, find 2 alt THHN copper, which we know is 195 amps. And then we go to table 310.15 C1 to find out what do we got to do because we've got seven current carrying wires in it. And the way I teach my class on this is if I'm sitting here in a closet by myself, a small closet, and I'm jumping up and down, I'm producing heat and I could dissipate the heat because the closet's big enough. But let's get seven people in there jumping up and down. It's going to start warming up and it's going to get hot. That's what we're trying to do the same thing with copper or the wire. If we got seven wires in there and they're all producing heat, we don't want it, somebody, one of the wires heat overheating and damaging that insulation or somebody else's or some other wire, I mean. So we got to keep the current carrying conductor. We got to derate it. So basically, you're saying, okay, 
we're not going to jump as much. We're going to jump just a little bit because we're not allowed to. That's kind of my example on that. So how many wires? We've got to go to table 31015C1, and that shows the number of wires and the percentage multiplier that you will multiply them past the by. And as you can see here, here's the table from the NEC book. You could put 1 to 3 on there at the very top. 1 to 3 and go over there to percentage and put 100%. But why? But I'm just, some questions, some guys will ask, why, why ain't 1 to 3 on there? Well, it's really on the table 310, 16, because it says 1 to 3 wires is that opacity. So it's at 100%. But we're looking for 7 to 9 conductors. So 7 to 9 conductors will be 70%. So we're going to take that amperage and multiply it times 70%. So if we take 195, 195 amps, multiply it times 70%, now we get 136.5 amps. So now that two alt copper wire that was good for 195 amps, now it's only good for 136. Hopefully you kind of see why. If it produced 195 amps, all of them did, it's producing heat and it can start damaging wires. And that's what we're trying to keep. So if we can keep the amperage down to a lower amount, then it won't produce as much heat and we're all good okay it's hot in here what if we got the temperature what if we're in alaska and we're on a roof and it's you know dead of winter it's 10 degrees well if we're trying to dissipate heat i feel like that wire could dissipate heat pretty well because it's in a cold atmosphere what if we're in sunny south florida and we're on a roof when it's middle of July. Will that wire be able to dissipate the heat as well? Well, no, it won't. And so that's where we're adjusting on this column or this table is the ambient temperature surrounding it. Table 315B1 shows the temperature D rating multiplier for the three columns on 31016. And that's that's the kicker there on that one, the curveball. A lot of guys get tripped up because they look at the three columns on this table and they think, well, which one do I need to get? Well, it's based on your insulation type. And if you look on table 310, there is three columns. You got your TW, THW, and THHN is what we call them. Or you got your 60, 75, and 90. You can do it that way. Well, this temperature, or this column, this table has the same columns. So we got to, if we use the 90 degree column on table 31016, we need need to use the 90 degree column on table 31015B1. And that's what I'm saying here. You get you must you have to make sure you're on the right temperature for the wire insulation and the ambient temperature around the raceway. This should be taken into account about every time since the temperature above 86 is somewhere some point in time of the year. Okay, here's sample problem number three. What is the impasse for the two alt THHN copper wire? It has seven current carrying conductors in it, and it's 105 degrees out there. Well, 105 is above 86, so obviously you can tell we're going to go lower than what we had before. As I was saying, which column do we go in? We need to make, make sure we do the TW, THW, THA10, or you could say the 60, 75, or 90. But we got to establish, we got to stay on it. And as you can see, it says temperature rating of conductor. And it's got 60, 75, and 90. So there's our three columns, TW, THW, and THA10. I think the question said it had 105 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you look right here, it says 105 degrees Fahrenheit. We're using THHN wire, which is the 90 degree conductor. And the multiplier is 0.87. So we're going to take our 0.87. And we're going to take 195 amps, because that's what TH2 alt THHN copper wire ampacity is. We got seven current carrying conductors. 
So we've got to multiply it times 70%. And then we've got 0.87, which is the multiplier for a 105 degree ambient temperature. Now that 195 amp wire, two watt wire, is only good for 118, 119 amps. So we don't want to get it as hot. Amperage produces heat. So if it, it's going to produce more heat at 195 amps than it will at 118. But we're keeping the amperage lower because of the ambient temperature and the other current carrying conductors in there. Okay, here's a question for you. What is the ampacity of the 4 alt THW wire that has an ambient temperature of 36 degrees Celsius? If it doesn't state what type of installation or what type of material it is, you go with copper. This does not say copper or aluminum, so you go with copper. You can pause the video and see if you can find it yourself. That's what I'd like for you to do. But uh, we're fixing to go on right here, and we're going to finish this question. But if you can pause it and do it, see what kind of answer you get, because this is 90% of the type questions that I've got on this lesson or something to this degree. So if you can get this one, you should be able to get most of them. Okay. Hopefully you're back and hopefully you got your answer. Table 310.16 says 4 alt THW wire, copper, has an ambient temperature of 36 degrees Celsius. The table 310.16 says 230 amps. Table 310.15B1 is your temperature. It's saying we're going to multiply up times 88%. So we, I got 202.4 amps. So 203 amps. It's going to be a 200 amp wire. Hopefully you got that one right. If you did, here's another one. It says a conduit contains seven current carrying conductors. It has a number 10 TW in it, and the ambient temperature is around 30 degrees Celsius. What's the ambient ampacity of this conductor? So one of the things I do on these type of questions you can do, uh, I'd recommend it. Translate, it's kind of like translating Spanish to English. You're translating seven current carrying conductors into a percentage. You're translating number 10 TW copper into an ampacity. You're translating 30 degrees Celsius into a multiplier. So you can circle the seven and then write 70% beside it. You can circle the 10 TW and put 30 amps beside it. You can circle the 30 degrees Celsius and put 100% or multiplier of one. You know, you can go to each table and do that on this, you know, question. And then you go, you write, you know, you write all your answers down and you can get a, a ampacity based on that. So 10 TW is good for 30 amps. Seven conductors is 70%. And 30 degrees Celsius is the multiplier of 1. So when we do all that, we get 21 amps. Most of your questions will be this type of question. You know, I know y'all are students, and I'm just trying to get y'all to flip the pages and understand, start understanding the National Electrical Code on the ampacity side. There's tons of different things and more details of it, but if we can get you this, you're on your way to, you know, getting the, becoming an electrician. Um, I think there was one of the things that talks about it's underground, the underground temperature is basically a constant temperature, so there's no derating on it. You know, what if you're going up a wall? <clears throat> I think if it's no more than 10 foot, you don't have to derate, but if it's more than 10 foot, then you have to start derating. <clears throat> Now, if it's more than 24 inch pipe or less than 24 inch, if you're going in between two panels, it may only be six inches. Do you have to derate there? And there's a lot of other questions, a lot of things to be answered. But if we can get you these three charts, you, you've got a good base start on and pass it on the National Electrical Code. Well, alrighty, that's the lesson for today. I'm going to try to do ranges, uh, box fill, uh, residential motor sizing, uh, calculations for breakers, overload protection, and all that on it. And so I've got other videos I'm going to put in there for, you know, wiring houses, 
your different types of wire, your boxes, devices, breakers, and all that. So if you want to watch the others, I hopefully I'll have them on there in the next couple of weeks or months. Welcome to the new world of virus. This is the way the lessons will be for a while. All right, take care.